What do you bet? Yeah, yeah, I'm going to get to the Ben Carson stuff here in just a second. Hang on. We're going to get to all of it. We get to all of it every day. Well, we get to more of it every day here than you're going to find anywhere else. But we're going to get to the Ben Carson stuff. Yes, I'm still steaming about this. Still peeved about it. It's, you know, Politico was ripped to shreds. They were fully exposed on this. And, and the media, even some elements of the media started turning against them. Now they're trying to put the pieces back together and reestablish the Politico piece uh, in part. Uh, the drive-by circle the wagons. The reason they didn't circle the wagons at first is because this was so egregious. I mean, they wouldn't want to take the, take the chance uh, of, of losing all credibility. This was this is such an outrageous thing that the Politico did. But give it a couple of days. Now they're trying to put it back together to uh, to protect uh, the Politico. But I, I'll give you details here. What I'm referring to in mere moments plus sound bites. And for those of you on hold on the phones, I sincerely ask you to hold on if you can. We are going to get to you. What do you bet that over half, if not more, of the protesting agitator type students in Mizzou? actually think Michael Brown, the gentle giant, raised his hands and surrendered and was running away and was nevertheless murdered by the cop. Don't shake your head. What do you what do you bet the majority? I'll bet you it's 90 percent. Believe it. It's what the race hustlers said. It's what was still promulgated as the reality of that story for months afterwards. People have been have been encouraged to believe that. That's where this whole Black Lives Matter thing sprung up. Black Lives Matter. And then you get into trouble if you say, no, all lives matter. No, that proves you're not sensitive to the cause if you think all lives matter. My, my point is that you've got, I think you've got a bunch of community organizers here, not even students, that are getting the rabble all worked up, succeeding in doing so. Anyway, the majority of students there, the majority of people just want this over so they get back to some sense of normalcy there. The news media coverage making it look like this this whole instance captivated the entire, captured the whole campus, and that everybody wanted the president gone, and everybody wanted uh, all of these demands implemented and so forth. Let me read you the last demand. The demands issued supposedly by the students and the football team. We demand, this is demand eight, we demand that the University of Missouri increases funding, (laughs) resources, which is funding, and personnel for the social justice centers on campus for the purpose of hiring additional professionals, particularly those of color, boosting outreach and programming across campus and increasing campus-wide awareness and visibility. You go through every one of these demands, and there's not a specific complaint of anything. The complaint is white privilege. The complaint is white majority. The complaint is not enough money for the minorities. Not enough power for the minorities. Not enough positions of power for the minorities. And so somebody needs to pay for this. In this case, it was the university president. Here's demand number seven. We demand that the University of Missouri increases funding and resources. No, no, it's it's in number seven, too. It's not just a number. Every demand wants more money, folks, and more resources. Uh, Back here to demand number seven. We demand the University of Missouri increase funding and resources for the University of Missouri Counseling Center for the purpose of hiring additional mental health professionals, particularly those of color, boosting mental health outreach and programming across campus, increasing campus-wide awareness and visibility of the counseling center, and reducing lengthy wait times for prospective mentally ill clients. This, this is a college 
campus, a university campus, and they need outreach, outreach of the mentally ill. Well, now, be, be careful with what, what, what they're saying is that apparently at this institution of higher learning, there are a lot of wackos. There are a lot of mentally ill people, and they're being ignored and taken for granted of, granted and underfunded and under-resourced and underrepresented, and most of them are people of color. Now, it's... It's a university. What are the mentally ill doing there? Who are they? The professors? Who are we talking about here? Oh, we know exactly who it is. Who do you think the mentally ill are? Who do you think the mentally... Who who do you think the... uh, Well, of course it's the oppressed. Who do you think it is? Oh, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. Well... Well, mentally ill is, yes, the result of uh, a lifetime of discrimination and a lifetime of poverty and uh, lack of resources and opportunity. What, but what is mentally ill's code words for things? You look at, I know what it is. If you don't, you figure it out. Nothing I can gain by pointing it out here. Demand six, we demand the University of Missouri composes a strategic 10-year plan by May 1st of next year that will increase retention rates for marginalized students, sustain diversity curriculum and training, and promote a more safe and inclusive campus. No complaint specified, just a bunch of demands. What is retention rates for marginalized students? Exactly right. They want to keep the failing students in school and probably on scholarship. They don't want the university to be able to kick out failing students. Because they're not really failing. They're marginalized and mentally ill, you see. And they are mentally ill because of the oppressive society and culture of the United States of America is represented on the campus at the University of Missouri. They're mentally ill because of racism, sexism, homophobia, misogyny, all of that. American culture and society has made them mentally ill, and therefore we need... They're victims! No, no, there's nothing specific for transgenders. They're all included here. That's the whole point. Who do you think we're talking about here? Uh, Is there anything else here? Number three, we demand the University of Missouri meet the Legion of Black Collegians demands presented in 1969 for the betterment of the black community. 1969. I guess that's a long time for some demands to be ignored. We demand the University of Missouri create and enforce comprehensive racial awareness and inclusion curriculum throughout all campus departments and units. Mandatory for all students, faculty, staff, and administration. This curriculum must be vetted, maintained, and overseen by a board comprised of students, staff, and faculty of color. Students, staff, and faculty of color get to determine the racial awareness and inclusion curriculum. I mean, the the, the inmates have been granted the asylum here. And let's see, from the Hill.com, Senator Roy Blunt, Republican Missouri, said today he hopes the University of Missouri becomes a role model for dealing with racial tensions. Racism has no place in our society, he tweeted well, apparently neither does reason to do what, what? See, this is, it's easier just to tag along with this, accept the premise. There's less friction if you simply accept the premise, and, and, and particularly if you're Republican, and you want to prove to people you're not a racist or a sexist or a bigot or a homophobe or what have